what would it be? What would the characteristics of an open source project be? Now, I'm going to provide some uh, characteristics of... Why is it not showing up? Come on. Okay, wake up. Okay. Some of the characteristics of an open source project. There's a lot of idealism that goes with it. Oh, I want to do this thing. I want to solve this problem. I just saw a tweet by somebody, a friend of mine, you know, a few minutes ago, saying that he, he posted a picture of, uh, of uh, one of those uh, uh, cards that you get at the coffee shop. You know, every time you buy something, they stamp on it. So he's saying, I'll be more than happy if someone can build a soft uh, a token uh, that we can put in my phone that you can just click on it instead of having a piece of paper, which almost always is never with you when you go to the coffee shop. So you never get to, to continue with the same, uh, uh, the same card, right? So you never get to benefit from whatever benefits it's supposed to give you. So that's a project. There is an interest. There's, a, there's a, something that you're keen to work on, all right? So it's idealism. You want to solve a problem. Backwards. You also have no constraints. Because I just want to solve this thing. What is it that I want to do? Just, just do this. Okay? Does it have a product roadmap? No. You're just, just going to do it and there's almost an endless thing. right? It's just the free road in front of you. There will be some pain, otherwise there's no gain. right? You're going to go through Haskell, whatever. I, I still have difficulty going through Haskell. but. <laughs> to go through that pain and see whether I can gain anything out of it. But that's more of a project. It's like, okay, let's learn something. Let's figure out something. You also do a lot of just try it. Just break it. Don't have to ask permission. Ask forgiveness. Okay? Oops, that's not the right thing to do. Maybe I want to do it differently. And I think that's perfectly fine. Because that's how we all learn, right? And that notion that goes with that is the idea of permissionless innovation. That means go ahead and do it, see what happens. If you innovate something new, that's great. If not, stop it, start something new, learn from it, and move on. Okay? Risk taking. You're almost always willing to take some risk. And you have sometimes, the thing about our project is, you really don't know how to quantify the risk. How much of this is really risky stuff? In the traditional sense, you know, is it financially risky? Is it... You know, what, what risk are we talking about? You are going to do just do it because you want to do it. It is an itch that you want to scratch. That's why we have heard this all these years, right? There is no product requirement document. You don't have to sign off anything. Just get it done. Fail fast. Fail early. You don't want to waste too much time doing something. And then I, I'm sure some of you would have come across the phrase, oh, this is uh, sunken cost. I should try and recover. I've already spent uh, you know, a year doing this, so I must try and make the best out of it. You know what? Sunken cost is sunken cost. It's not going to come back to you. So just cut the, cut the losses and move on. Uh, and the same thing applies in this case, right? Fire fast, fail early. Don't keep saying, I already spent a year on it, 12 months on it. I don't want to fail. I just want to try and see whether I can salvage. No. Because you've already gone down a rabbit hole that's not going to be helpful. But that's what projects are all about you repurpose and redo it. So how does that contrast with a product? Now this is where the distinction has to be made. Because if you are going to tell somebody, I'm working on an open source project, if you told me that, I have different expectations of what you're trying to do. But if you turn around and say, no, I'm working on an open source product, I have different sets of expectations. So what would they be? Some of the characteristics. One of the things about open source products is to reduce risk. It's just like any other product that you want to create. You want to reduce risk for yourself as well as for your potential customers. Because you're creating something for a customer. There is a customer in mind. That is the why you're doing this thing. You are doing it because there's a customer in mind. It happens to be an open source product. It could have been proprietary. It applies in this case as well. But it is an open source product. There are constraints. Okay? And it, these constraints need to meet what the customer requires. If the customer doesn't require it, why are you building this? Why? Ask the question, why? Why are you building this? Who's going to pay for this? 
Because a project, I don't really care. I'm doing it because I think I want to do it. A product, on the other hand, has got a different connotation to it. Okay. There's also this notion of user experience and user uh, usability uh, issues. The typical complaint about open source projects is that, oh, the UI sucks. Oh, who designed this? You know, right? I mean, you all laugh. Right? I, you, you know this, right? Uh, I, I'm also uh, uh, one of those who, who tend to complain about that. But I accept that, but that's how it is. Now, it's up to me to try and see what I can do to improve it if I choose to want to do that. But in the case of a product, that's a different story. It's a product. There is a customer. You need to make sure that the customer is happy to see it. If not, you have a problem. The customer is not going to pay for you to do any of these things. So UI, UX, finesse is something that will begin to see in a product. Scalability, that is absolutely important, especially in today's context, right? How, did, how can you help uh, uh, evolve the particular product? A project has got a different constraint. A project, do I have to make it scalable? Maybe, maybe not. I don't really care. But if I'm going to create a product with some customers in mind, there probably is a requirement at some point I might need to scale it. What do I need to think when I want to scale? What are the constraints? How much more investments do I need to put in? Do I get the right resources to be involved? Who will be the next set of customers who come on board? There's a whole bunch of things to think about when you talk about a scaling issue for a product. Projects, no. And the last bit here is one of branding. Now this, this is something that I want you to think about for a moment. Because one of the biggest problems and mistakes a lot of open source projects do is that when the project becomes successful, because there's a lot of people using it, you know, and, and, and working on it and so on, they will say, oh, you know, I'm going to create a product out of it. That's great. And what do they do? They keep the same name. Okay? And then what happens after that? Oh, the money starts flowing in, the VCs come and say, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll invest in you, blah, blah, blah. And what do they do? They create a company after that. And what do they call their company? After the product name. So you have a project, a product, and a company with the same name. So in any context, if I were to call out that name, which one am I referring to? Think about that. Okay, I'm not going to call out the particular one that I have in mind, but uh, there is a reason why I even came to this particular uh, 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 bullet point there and highlighting it separately and spending more time on it because this is very important for us. Because you really, really want to separate the project from the product from the company. Have a different name. Something else. Because you know what, what, what could happen? Just think about, have a mental exercise. You have a project that's working very successfully. And you say, you know what? I start this project, it's very successful. Let me turn it into a product that I can ship to customers. I call it the same name. Now, for the people who are in the project community, how are they going to feel when you do this? They may sense a betrayal. I don't know. They may sense, oh, what are you trying to do? You're trying to take all our labor and do it for yourself? There are many, many questions that can come up. So it may be a lot better by calling it a new name. You start fresh. You can say, no, this is yours. I'm not touching that. Then I'm going to build on what you have built on with something else. When you move forward this way, you'll find that your, your nuances are going to be extremely, extremely different. And people react to you very differently. The third one, what about people? So you have product, open source products, you got open source projects. These two things don't exist on their own. They exist because of people, you and me, right? So what about people? Project people are very different from product people. 
Just think about the people you have engaged with. People who work on open source projects and people who work on the product side of the house. And I can highlight this from my experience within the organization I am with. We have people who manage the open source products that Red Hat provides. Who are not necessarily open source project people. They are very familiar with it, they do all this thing, but they have a different way of approaching the problem. Which means they have to manage the deadlines. They have to manage expectations. They need to manage marketing issues. They need to manage a whole bunch of things that a project doesn't really care about. So the mindset is going to be very different. So the type of people, again, is different. Can we have people who can be on both types of uh, uh, um, uh, uh, frame of reference? Maybe, but you know, it's, it's actually not easy to switch from a community-based way of doing stuff in a project to a so-called corporate way of doing stuff in a product, the constraints are very different. To switch mentally, it's actually very hard. It's not an easy thing to do. There are overlaps, I agree, but the people who can do it comfortably and successfully are few and far between. And I don't know anybody who has done that because it's really, really very hard. Okay. People, an important component. Now, what about licensing? Now, licensing is, like I stated uh, there, right? It's, it's sort of like a constitution. The licensing lays the ground rules for the project or the community, even the product. Because the licensing determines how are people going to participate? What are your rules of engagement? We're not talking about software licenses, the traditional uh, proprietary software perspective. We're talking about open source licenses. If I say that my project is on a GPL license, I have set up the terms and condition. If I say it's an MIT license, it's a BSD license, I have set up my terms and condition. So for people to participate, you have to sort of agree to those things. If you don't agree with that, that's a community that you can't be part of. So licensing is actually a fundamental component that we need to look at when we look at projects. Okay? It states the expectations, rules of engagement to all involved on the projects, even to the extent, I mean, I put there in, you know, uh, in quotation marks, constitution, because constitutions tend to have different implications, different meanings, right, for different people. This is really a contract between people. So it's, this is how I would like you to participate. And if you take the uh, components, you add your ideas, this is how you can benefit from it. This is how I can benefit from it. And this is how a third party can benefit from it. So we have set out the rules. So we have many, many rules along the way because we are trying to find ways to make sure that whatever intellectually we come up is workable for everybody. To the, uh, to the extent that it is re uh, reasonably possible. So, the question to you. I know it's after lunch. Okay? The blood has just gone down to the stomach, right? Can a project not have a license? How many of you think a project must have a license? I see one, two. It's only a few of you. Okay. Okay, how many of you say a project does not have to have a license? Really? Wow. I, I think you, it's, it's, it's kind of uh, questionable if you don't have a license. There's a reason why I say it's questionable because the notion of a project with a license as stated in the first bullet point, is a contract between people in the team, in whoever is coming forward to participate. It's also setting in place a for the future to see what this means if you're not in the picture. Now, you may not care about it. You may say, I'm leaving it in public domain. Even a statement that says this is in public domain is a license. If you don't have anything at all, you don't state anything at all, from a legal perspective, I think under the Copyright Act, 
it assumes you are the owner and assumes or whoever that you is have uh, reserved rights. It is actually, right now, I'm not sure even the legal system, even the lawyers will agree which way it flows. So if you have an open source project on GitHub or GitLab or wherever it might be, and you don't have a license statement there, you completely leave it out. A document that says this is under whatever license, you don't even state it. I, who just walk by and drive by a coder, look at the code and say, you know what? I don't know whether I can even use this because you didn't tell me what I can do with it or how I'm supposed to participate by taking the code. You have not told me that. So how am I supposed to do the right thing? Because assuming I want to do the right thing, we assume people want to do the right things, right? Uh, we don't care about those who don't want to do the right things because for them rules don't apply. So that doesn't matter. <laughs> That's a different kettle of fish. But those who care to do the right thing, it becomes a challenge. And we have then lost, essentially, a whole bunch of work that was done by some people that now cannot be consumed for something else. And that's such a waste. That's, to me, that's a, a real waste of opportunity. So if you look at it as a, as a, uh, 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 <clears throat> as a stool, a three-legged stool, to make an open source project, or even a product for that matter, successful, you need three parts to it. Okay, I'm only interested in open source stuff. I'm not interested in proprietary stuff because that's a completely, any, no rules apply and whatever rules they want to choose to apply, that's up to them. I mean, really nothing for me to talk about. The source code has to be available. Without a source code, what are we talking about? Nothing. The license has to be there because then I know how I can engage. And the last one is a community because the community will be drawn based on the licenses. Because, they say, oh, you know what, I am, they are willing to accept my ideas and this is how we can engage and how we can move forward. Essentially, this three-legged stool defines a lot of the stuff that we have done. Now, if you take this as a model and look at everything else that you have worked on, how does this fit into your view of the world in terms of how you work with open source projects open source products. I think this is a good checkpoint. Now, if the stool is wobbly, that means one leg is shorter than the other, maybe you need more community. Maybe there's a problem in the community, there's not enough people there. What does that mean? It means, it can mean, mean anything. Like for example, how many of you work on OpenSSL? Like one, oh, okay, one, okay. That's exactly one person. But OpenSSL is in every single product and hardware handphone that you have in this room. But it's only exactly one person working on it. Now, so is the community very poor there? Yeah, <laughs> very poor. Now, when we face that problem with the, what was the, the thing with the OpenSSL bug, uh, the bleed, uh, heart bleed, right? Now, heart bleed, at that point in time, in heart bleed, in the community, there was, there was about three or four developers, that was it. Now, is it bad? Sort of bad, but the product, in the, okay, rather, the project had reached a level of stability for many, many, many years. Now, when something reaches a level of stability, is that good or bad? I mean, it's good, but nobody's watching it, and the people watching it are so few. And when something hits, how are you going to address that? So we don't have a means to address that part conveniently. And so everybody had to scramble trying to figure out what to do and blah, blah, blah. And finally, Linux Foundation organized some stuff. And now they have uh, entire infrastructure uh, related uh, support uh, uh, engagement in terms of payment of people and hiring people and making things work. So that's an important component as well. But for the purpose of the talk, for me, these three legs are very, very important for any open source project. Okay. When this converts into a product, the community may or may not follow you because it depends on what it is. Okay? Your license, do you want to change your license when from a project to a product? Boy, I tell you, that is really, really hard. 
that's going to be very, very tricky. You don't want to do that. Because then there'll be a lot of questions asked, oh, you're changing the constitution. What are you trying to do? Too many questions will be asked. So if you can avoid it, avoid it. Don't do that. And source code, that's what drives the entire thing. So give me, let me show you an, a, a continuum. This is the experience I have, and this is the organization I'm with. This is how Red Hat has done all these years. How we have been able to do what we have been able to do. In the middle, the, the blobs of blue, right? These are the gazillion amounts of open source projects out there. There's so many of them, okay? Some of them aggregate to become Apache projects or whatever, CentOS or OpenStack or the Linux kernel or Patternfly or whatever it may be. Some of those things become interesting projects that Red Hat gets interested in. And these in the column next to the blue blobs on the both of the left and the right, these are open source pro projects that Red Hat takes a leadership role in. Now, I'm not even talking about which one has leadership, and it doesn't matter, but in this case, in this example, I'm just talking about Red Hat stuff, right? So it takes leadership role in open source projects. Then from the projects, Red Hat creates products. These are open source. Every single component in here, on the extreme left and extreme right, they're open source products. So that's what Red Hat does. Every step of the way, as you can see, each of these projects here have got different project names. When it becomes a product, it is kind of boringly genericized, right? <laughs> Red Hat storage, okay, satellite. Well, that's because if I'm going to be using Foreman or Gluster or Ceph, it becomes confusing. Because uh, which one are you talking about? Are you talking about the project or the product? Right? So we need to have that clear mental distinction when we talk about a product versus a project. Okay? And very importantly from Red Hat's perspective, from my personal perspective as well, these arrows are double-headed. They go back and forth. That means things that you do in the product side that we ship to our customers, for example, improvements, bug fixes, whatever it may be, features and so on, goes back to the projects. We don't keep it because there's no value in doing that. The value is enabling these guys. Whether they pay us or not, it's a separate uh, conversation. Let's con talk about that separately. But it's important that these guys are successful. And in, in the end, some of it goes back here as well, whatever that goes back. So it is a complete two-way process. Because if there isn't this two-way process, we have a huge problem. We are missing the point about being part of an open source community. If it is one-way street. Then nobody will trust me. Nobody will trust Red Hat as an organization, right? With that, I will come to a very important pitch, Force Asia, that happens uh, in two months' time. Uh, Hong Fook has told me that there is a special discount for you, 20%. If you use that discount code, nobody can remember, called Geek Camp. It's very hard to remember that. Right? But it's valid until 10 a.m., I guess, in Singapore time, tomorrow. Uh, for, and also for special 10th anniversary t-shirts of Force Asia. So this is the 10th year we are running that. Okay, so please sign up if you uh, are going to be here to be able to do that. So with that, I say thank you very much. Again, the, my slides are there. And you can, uh, one of the things, it is one of my favorite pictures, uh, photos that's hung up in the office. Um, who are we as an organization trying to do what we are trying to do? We treat ourselves as a startup. We are 12,000 people now and you know, we are 25 years old, but we largely treat ourselves as a startup. Okay, and say, sure, uh, the passion of a startup, the perspective of industry leader, and the power of the community. You drive with the community, go work with them, do what we need to do, and work it, make it happen. Make this community successful, and then we become successful. It's not the other way around. Okay, so my contact details are there, and so thank you very much for your, for your attention, and I'm happy to take questions. And I got two minutes left. <laughs> Thank you.
No questions. Ah, oh, <laughs> man. One question. Yeah, he needs a mic. Um, thank you for that question. I mean, maybe I use. Okay, that's an important question. I was not part of the talk, but that's an important question enough. I think uh, needs to be addressed. Um, there is something called CLA, Contributor Licensing Agreement. Personally, in, uh, I don't like it because I think that defeats the purpose. Uh, from a Red Hat perspective, we don't encourage that. I mean, uh, but if a Red Hatter is working on an open source project that happens to require CLA, that's entirely up to them. I mean, we don't, we, Red Hat as an organization doesn't dictate if a Red Hatter participates in an open source project how you should contribute. It's really up to you because you're answerable for it at the end of the day, even though you are an employee of Red Hat. So we have very clear rules as to how that is engaged. But the CLA is a, personally, it's a problem for me. Because essentially what that means is that I'm transferring all my rights to you as a, the, the owner of the project to do what you please with it without anything that potentially can come back to me. And I think that kind of defeats the purpose of collaboration. No, I, I agree with you on that one. I think that, that particular instance, I think there are some other nuances behind that as well. I'm not in, I, I've read about it, but I, I don't remember some of the details. Again, you, if you want to do a CLA, for example, I am happy to do a CLA with Free Software Foundation. I'm happy to do that with a software conservancy. But I'm not happy to do that with company X or company Y. No, I'm sorry, I, I won't do that because I know where this is probably going to. Software Conservancy isn't exactly going to IPO for anything. I mean, they may, but then they may not, right? And it doesn't really matter, okay? There is a bigger, a bigger goal for them. Same thing with Free Software Foundation. I got no issues with that. That's perfectly fine with me. So assignment of copyright from that perspective is fine. But anything else, I draw my line there. But, but then those companies, I, I agree with you partially, and the counterpoint would be, how do we do what we do in Red Hat? We don't sign, we don't have any CLAs for anything. We still have a product. We are answerable to, the, to our, you as a customer. We are answerable to you if you run anything that we ship to you as a product, open source product. We manage the rest of it with whoever provided the code. So it is actually not true that I, as a company, need assignment of rights to me before I can be answerable to my customer who is going to be using my open source product. Because if that was the case, we won't be where we are today. Okay. Yeah, all right. Any other questions? Okay, I guess not. <laughs> 